13th meeting to order, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of last month. So moved. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion has carried. First on the agenda is the Paul's report. And welcome. Mm -hmm. For the month of October, we had 752 animals that entered into the shelter. 23.4% of those came from the county jurisdictions. 16.6% .6 came from the city of Laverne. 43.6% came from the city of Murfreesboro and 16.4% came from the town of Smyrna. We had 159 adoptions for the month, uh, 104 animals reclaimed and 438 animals that were humanely euthanized. Uh, that gave us an uh, overall adoption reclaim percentage of 34.8% and our euthanasia rate was 57.9 percent. You've been on the road any of this month? Have I been on the road? No, the, the mobile unit? Yes, we have. We were at PetSmart uh, this past Saturday and did four adoptions there. Uh, and um, I think I've told you all before, we're in the PetSmart Adoption Center in Smyrna. Uh, we did, I think, three there today. It's kind of been an up and down. I spoke to the mayor last week. It was kind of down at that point. I think we've got it turned around and we're going to be able to go forward. Uh, but we've done that to make, I think, 15 cats there in the last month. I, I would assume, um, I asked this when you went to Sh Shelbyville no? mm -hmm. and kind of done each way, did you take the mobile unit with you? We did not. You didn't? We did not. Time was of the essence, so instead of spending the time to get it hooked up and getting over there, we just grabbed trucks and went. Oh, okay. Um, we had the first unit there within, I think, 20 minutes because we routed someone from uh, the Eagle area over there, and then we had two additional trucks there within, I think, 25 minutes. Wow. So we were we got down there quick, as quickly as we could to, to assist them. Um, I did put a new uh, thing on the bottom of the report on the front page. If you see there, the live release rate, um, I like to term that at, at times the, the get out rate. Um, when you look at the report, you see the adoptions and you see the reclaims, but in the other outcome there, you can see there's 49 there and some of those other outcomes are uh, animals that have been relocated such as of our such as our wildlife so when you look at the overall adoption reclaim percentage of 34.8 percent that doesn't tell you every single animal that got out of the shelter alive so 40.3 animals were, re were live release is that, i'm sorry but that, that it's just strange. <laughs> well, it, that's a good thing I, it is. Is. Yeah, i might want to visit there I might not get out alive <laughs> well, unfortunately i guess you have a 40.3 percent but i mean that um, I looked up just to see what last year during the same month was. It was 32.51%. So we're moving in the right direction. We're doing the right things. It just takes it takes longer to get there than what we would like. Uh, out of the 104 animals that were reclaimed, 58 of those were from the pit sniff or cat sniff program. Uh, at the end of the month, we had 124 animals that remained in the shelter. 2,100 people visited the shelter looking for a new or lost pet, and we had 1,693 log calls and voicemails. Uh, we had 1,612 calls that were received to the shelter, 1,637 calls that were completed. You can see the breakdown by jurisdictions on those. And then we traveled 12,950 miles for the month of October. Uh, year to date, we've had 2,909 animals that have entered the shelter. Uh, that live release rate on our outcomes uh, for the fiscal year actually mirrors uh, where we are for the month of October, which was 40.3%. Previous year was 28.74, so a pretty significant increase there, uh, which we're proud of. Uh, we've had almost 6,500 people visit the shelter and 8,836 log calls and voicemails. Uh, 6,300 activities were entered and 6,334 activities were closed out, and we've traveled 47,289 miles. Uh, the last part of the report are, is the rabies exposure and bite report. We had 30 bites that were reported for the month. Five of those animals were tested for rabies with none of those being positive. And our other exposure, we had seven and seven cases that were reported. Two of those animals were tested and none being positive there as well. Question. Yes, on uh, the other outcomes, mm -hmm. the four months of this year, this fiscal year, we've had 309 others. They don't dogs right. or cats. What do they the, generally? Run? The others are going to be uh, anything that doesn't fit into the dogs or cats. Uh, so you typically your other outcomes uh, on your other category are going to be your wildlife. Yeah. Um, animals that can be released uh, according to the state that don't so have to be put down. Foxes, uh, rabbits, squirrels. Uh, or? It could be rabbits, squirrels, okay. possums, uh, armadillos, groundhogs. Um, 
those skunks. type of things. Skunks, uh, skunks, fox, bats, and raccoons, uh, according to the state, they need to be uh, euthanized because of the four highest carriers of rabies among wildlife. Any more questions? Make a motion to approve the report. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is the ambulance service report. How are you doing that, Mike? Good, how are you? Doing wonderful. We're ready whenever you are. You made them. 2,173 calls <clears throat> during the month of October. Average response time 7.7 minutes. We had 35 coroner calls and uh, 13 autopsies that were ordered. We billed $1,276,330, collected $587,172. Um, <clears throat> that puts us on a projected yearly collection of 6.3 million which is a little bit behind last year, but I believe that we will get caught up. Seemed like last month was, was a low percentage rate as far as collections. It's Actually, it's been down uh, since um, the beginning of the year. And the reason for that was because the people who do our collections um, switched uh, computer programs and it had several glitches in it, and I think we've helped them work that out. Okay. Uh, but we'll go back and recoup that. No, I mean, it looks pretty good at 74 percent this month. Yeah. We had 478,847 dollars worth of insurance write-offs and 240,450 of collection agency write-offs and 1,917 dollars for um, the county that we <coughs> didn't bill. The chart for the ambulances we drove a total of 38,490 miles and you see the maintenance costs and the fuel costs per ambulance in totals uh, as well as the total operation costs. Um, one thing I'll call your attention to I believe it was Commissioner Schaefer last month found a mistake on the, we had inadvertently listed num uh, number 62 as being a backup ambulance and it was not. What caused that was we had actually taken 55 off of the list and the computer actually decided that <laughs> he didn't like that. So. But six, uh, 55 is the ambulance that's over in Shevable being remounted. Uh, we may get that ambulance back by this Friday. Total of our out of zone calls is 642. The next page lists the in services and training and medical coverage for special events and the various teams, the pedal medics and the <coughs> tops medics, and the community relations portion of the ambulance service and the sort team, their activities for the month. Following <coughs> pages. A response time report for each station uh, as to the number of their response times with the average being 7.7 .7 minutes. Following page is the district calls, ambulance calls broken down by commissioner districts. The national calls for the month as well as the transport team calls. Uh, we had a mistake on that last month if you recall and we've gotten that fixed, the uh, OIT fixed that for us. Transport team made a total of 105 calls last month. Following pages, same data except for um, year, it's year to date. And then the next page is the matrix that we have um, as to which ambulance made which calls in whose districts. So you can see that data there. two or three notes to share with you. <coughs> Any questions for Mike? How come Salem made so many Nashville calls? What's, um, what am I missing? That, 
there's another thing that we'll have fixed by next month. <coughs> if you subtract the 40 that the transport team made, the transport team is actually stationed at Salem, mm -hmm. but we don't call that the Salem ambulance, that they have the transport uh, calls are added into that figure. So if you subtracted the 40 calls um, that they made, I think they ended up making 26 calls or something, yeah. which is about normal. <coughs> Like on those calls, it looks looks like uh, Zone Four MTSU keeps getting a large number of calls, and uh, Manchester is serving as their backup. Matter of fact, they did Buku more calls in the MTSU zone than they did their zone. Right. Are they the closest? They are the closest to MTSU. They're not necessarily the closest, they're, but they they end up being the backup. What the, the problem is is that we have MTSU zone and Burton Street zone and Salem zone, which are all connected to each other, and they serve as primary backups for each other. <coughs> but when one of those teams is out, um, it's like dominoes falling, mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it ends up with Manchester Road being the backup for all three of those ambulances, but primarily MTSU. And what I guess what, you bring them up on roadside somewhere up bring them up, in town. Bring them up by, in public parking lot. So if you see that ambulance in the public parking lot, that's where they're at, um, and that way they can respond to all three of the zones. Anybody else have any questions for Mike? If there's no questions, I'll entertain a motion on the report. I move to approve the report, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion? Do we have a second? <coughs> Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. I think you got a budget transfer. We have a, a budget item. We received a check from Stonecrest Medical Center for $6,000. That's for uh, the funding of a scholarship. And we'd like to put that into our scholarship fund. That's, so a, that's a good program right there. It is. Is there a motion to the effect? So moved. We got approved. a motion and is there a second? Second. Got a second. All right, discussion. Call roll. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the fire and rescue. <coughs> <coughs> How's it going? All right. <coughs> first page, first two pages is our call volume. Instance broke down by description. Uh, this is from January 1 to uh, November 18th. So far, the date, our total call volume is 738 calls. <coughs> the next sheet is uh, each individual instant that we were paged out for, the address and type of uh, call it was. And then on the right side is the uh, response times. Any, any unusual on that, Mark? Um, uh, other than uh, the only one that comes to mind is, uh, and I was going to cover it later in port, um, engine 1505 animal truck <clears throat> at an MBA on 840, and they responded to that. And we're taught to the whatever lane on the right, like on the right, the right side lane, if the wreck's on the right side of the road, we're trained to park our fire trucks in that lane, block that lane, and then everything responds in front of that. Well, that night there was a young man coming down the road, it was still dark, running 65 miles an hour, hit the fire truck right in the rear end. And of course, then after he hit the truck, thank goodness there all the firefighters and law enforcement were in front of the fire engine, so it saved them. And uh, then after the, he hit the truck, the, the guys had to go out there and cut him out of the vehicle, transport him. So that's, a, I mean, that's the major thing that stood out in the, <clears throat> in the um, month as far as calls. But when your motor vehicle accidents, either with injuries or without, the only ones you go to is the unincorporated area of the county and the interstate. We were, we, we were, the county rescue responds on interstate, except for between Milk Center Parkway and Church Street, or actually uh, Joe B. Jackson. 
So county covers uh, all the way up to Walter, let's see, I think it's 66, Sam Ridley Parkway from the 66 on the Interstate 24 all the way to the Coffee Can Line, mm -hmm. except for that little stretch right there okay. the city covers. Mm -hmm. And then we cover all the unincorporated areas in the county. Okay. And I, <clears throat> matter of fact, we... Uh, so what I'm getting at is that's about 276 accidents. Is it, yeah. Well, total call, the MVAs this year is 452 uh, MVAs countywide, and that's at 16 of those were with extrications. So MVAs are ninety percent of our call volume, yeah. and and they're being <coughs> and they're being staffed by volunteers except for the sort team. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes they're in service, sometimes, sometimes they're not. not. Uh, okay. Next uh, next sheet is the motor vehicle accident report, and I highlighted in my report that uh, eight forty eastbound fifty five mile marker, a fifty mile marker. Was the where it fired in the 1505 ambulance truck was hitting the rear end? What's <coughs> insurance going to cover on that? I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. That is actually an ambulance truck covered by their insurance. It wasn't okay. one of the county owned vehicles. So they'll be dealing with their insurance company to, to either repair it or, or tow it out. And I, they probably will end up putting a new box on the back of it. And I want to clarify something when I said they've been staffed by volunteers. Sometimes those. those uh, Rescue trucks are staffed, and sometimes they're not because those people have jobs. They have yeah. their family they have to go to. So, what we have is we create a, a web-based report where dispatch can go and look, and they can tell when Rescue Seven, which is County Truck, or Rescue Forty One, Rescue Seventeen is Kittrell, Rescue Twenty One is Walt Hill, and Rescue Fifteen is Amble. They can go in there and look on that board and tell when that truck is in service, when it's out of service. So I mean, and that way it pays the based on if they're in service they paid them if not then they paid sort for backup well tell me on that went out to on 840 because it was before it was the first of November mm -hmm. so, it, so that was before we didn't switch to daylight time till that weekend or off daylight time so at 555 a.m. is it light or the sun should it be was dark it was, it was dark. still dark okay. but you had Three law enforcement vehicles on the scene, the blue lights lit up, mm -hmm. the fire truck was lit up, the rescue truck was on the scene for that accident. When he hit the fire truck in the back end, then those guys had to pull the rescue truck around and cut him out. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't fix stupid. <laughs> that, that, well, and what happened, he come, I don't know where he come down the road, but he got off on the left side and lost control, and he jerked it when he did. He just he come right across the interstate, you see marks, and hit that truck right in the back end. He's probably, is he, and is he, we just, is he okay? I don't know. Once he once he was transported, we just we don't get involved. And if I and HIPAA provides, if I did know, I couldn't tell you because of the HIPAA laws. <clears throat> but anyway, that's I mean that's that's one of the things we face on an interstate, you know. And and a lot of times you're out there working a wreck, and then they don't these they don't check up. I mean, these eighteen wheels if they, if they can run sixty five mile an hour, they run you know. Mm -hmm. It was bad at the fire engine was hit, but it, but the safety mechanism that's yeah. put in place worked. Yeah. And that's why we park it. That's why we park it in that lane, and with the wheels turned out, if it hits it, it drives it out in, in the right. other lane, rather than to the responders. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Total of uh, 41 motor vehicle calls, uh, with average response time of 9.6 minutes. Next sheet is the uh, consolidated water report, training hours. There's a total of uh, 1,837 calls year to date. Uh, like I said, 452 of those are motor vehicle accidents. And uh, at 16 to that number, there's a total number that we did actually, actually did extrication. Over 9,902 hours training hours countywide. The next sheet is the uh, document we send to the Coast Department of Structure Fires that have had damage where they will be, be reported. If they choose to remodel, they'll have, of course, they'll have to pull a permit. And we provide that information to them so they're, they are aware of that. The last sheet is the breakdown so far of our truck maintenance. Uh, we've spent $45,201.06 year to date. Uh, engine 102, we spent $15,944 on that engine. That engine has 90,000 miles on it. Um, 
$7,760 on engine 101, and then on engine 202, we spent $9,354.33. The reason that is so high is that we had to rebuild some parts of the pump and all the valves and stuff on the a pump panel because of the washers and the valves and stuff had, had wore out over time. So we just, we just trying to keep them up, keep them in uh, service. Uh, actually, engine 103, it has gotten so bad, we just, we've taken it out of service. That's an 88-mile Han. Let me ask you a question. On the, going back to your, I guess, the training hours and those numbers and stuff like that, it don't, say anything, it don't show anything about TAFERS reports. Are, are all those uh, departments turning in their TAFERS reports? They, they're supposed to be. And I get a report from the state every so often, uh, about every quarter, showing me what TIFA reports have been turned in, and then I try to match them up and try to make sure that they're with what they're getting us. I mean, basically what they do is they log in their, their calls, and they send us telling them my calls broke down by a sheet that was created, that we created that breaks it down for us. Right. And then uh, TIFA's, TIFA's will send me a document every quarter telling me what each individual call volume is for each department broken down. And I go in there and make sure that it's it's close should be close. Uh, that whenever whenever you have an incident, you got ten days from the day of that incident to file with teachers. That's state law. And that's why I'm asking there. Is there any of them that's violating state law by not by not? Uh, there's someone that's been that's behind, but and I, we've spoken to them and, they, and they're trying to get caught up. Okay. We work with them as, as best we can. All right. Uh, of course, in the last sheet is the uh, what I'm going over is the uh, the pumpers and the total maintenance cost of what we spent so far this year. And it's in four months, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I was making sure. If Though the uh, I wish you were talking calendar year. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> We've got eighty thousand dollars in our maintenance budget, and we'll probably spend every penny of it. Okay. And that's my, that's my report. Any questions on the report? <clears throat> Hearing or seeing no questions, I entertain a motion for the report. Motion to approve. Is there a second? A second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. I've got one more uh, thing I'd like to bring up. The uh, grant, uh, AFG Assistive Firefighters Grant has opened up and we're, I'd like to request permission from this committee to apply for a new pumper. Uh, it, it's, uh, we're going to ask request for 385000 for a new pumper and a 10% match by the county. And the deadline is December 6th to have it in. With, with, a, for many, with the maintenance thing that you just, <coughs> that shows the need right there. Move to approve. Yes. Got a motion? Is there a second? Second. With a second. All right. Any discussion? All you're doing is applying for a grant. Yeah, all we're doing is applying for a grant. There's no guarantee we'll get it. And if we do get it, I'll bring it back for this committee and we'll go through y'all budget and full commission to prove it. But $38,000, $38,500 for a $400,000 pumper, pretty good deal, I think. Yeah. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the emergency management. Report. How you doing tonight? Hey, all right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You have my report there in front of you. Uh, we had very few calls that EMA got involved in this past month. There's only three that were minor. Uh, the, probably the biggest one was the bus accident where it was rear-ended. We went out there as a precaution just in case it became a larger incident. It wasn't one on 840, was it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Don't. Uh, don't. But I do want to take this time to, uh, to to talk to you about the communications upgrade, the tower project, as we commonly call it. The last time I spoke to you, which uh, in the October meeting, we were just about to go out and do the site uh, surveys with Motorola and Aviate. Motorola is is the uh, uh, program; they provide the program management for us. Aviate is the microwave company who works for Motorola. Uh, went out to all the sites that we currently have and, and have control over. And uh, a few of the things you see there, some of the stuff that still needs to be done by us to get it going. Uh, 
we're getting elect uh, le electrical service to Smyrna Tower, the site this weekend. That's the Middle Tennessee Electric site. We have approval to do that. Uh, the Milton site electrical is complete as of now, as of now, and the fire antenna has been installed this week. The worst, I don't want to say worst, but the least improved site at this point is the Hudson Road site, the one we just just got. It's uh, we're doing some clearing of brush and some cleaning, and then we're going to add tower light to get it in FAA uh, compliance and uh, remove the existing dish before Motorola can do some things with it. That's the one that we that that we take over. That was, uh, yeah, we just leased oh, that. Oh, just leased that old it. Yeah. site has been sitting there unused for a number right. of years. And we're working with the uh, sheriff's office. The the tower site. Uh, <coughs> there's power there. There's enough power to to, monitor, uh, to uh, for the site at the sheriff's office on top of the jail. However, there's some challenges with getting the power from where it is right now to the uh, what they call the penthouse, the top of the building, where it's usually, of course where the tower equipment's going to be. So we got some challenges there. We got to work. Was it that is challenges for infrastructure trying to get the? Yeah. yeah yes. We're going to, have to do some drilling, customs, uh, and to get it to that location. So there's going to be some cost involved there. Don't know how much right now. We'll put it out for bid. Uh, also, uh, if you have no other questions on the tower project, I just just letting y'all know we're working this with the sheriff's office right now. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but in the 1950s there was uh, the the country uh, started what's called the uh, National Alert System, uh, warning system, excuse me, National uh, Alert Warning System. And uh, it's been around since, like I said, 1950s. It was originally uh, put out for a uh, possible nuclear attack, to be honest with you, uh, and to uh, keep all civilian officials informed of what's going on. Well, 1950 was a long time ago, and uh, it's time for an upgrade. And also, it's not just used for nuclear attack anymore, it's used for weather events and things of that nature as well. It's controlled by FEMA now, and they have a, a hard line on this into all the uh, state headquarters as well. They like to have a node in each county, uh, and they want to upgrade everything to digital. And I gave you a little bit of information on the digital upgrade. There's four packages we can go to go with. The bottom line package is a phone. All right, all this is going to be internet based. It's going to be voice over internet protocol now, rather than hard line. Um, but you can go with phone with no backup. No, no satellite backup or the top line package is uh, data phone with satellite backup and that runs you about with the maintenance about twenty six hundred dollars a year uh, we're talking to the uh, sheriff's office because the sheriff's office dispatch is the ideal location for it now your next question is where's the old system one is replaced where the old one is the old one is at Murfreesboro Police Department uh, it don't know how it ended up there I don't know the history on that but typically it's at a county level so we're talking to the sheriff's office about that. I have already gone to uh, uh, Steve Smith to see if this is something that uh, 911 will fund. He doesn't think it is. So right now, what's what I need to do by December is, is pick a location for it and uh, uh, so that we can tell Timo. The good news is Timo will, will pick up the, the training on it because it's going a little bit of training, the, the, the first year cost for it, as well as the maintenance for, for the first year. So they'll pick that up. It's, it's something that's needed. And I'm sure your next question is, which level do you, you want me to recommend? I would not recommend anything that doesn't have a backup because when things go bad, systems go down. So the first two packages I wouldn't even consider. I would only consider the last two. Uh, the, the good thing about having the data is because is that there are situation reports that come in and uh, there's ability to send messages to other parts of the country as well right there in front of you. So, uh, so when all else fails, you at least have that. Would it not, as far as the backup, and I agree on the backup, but would it not be best on the backup if the backup was at another location in case the event of a tornado or some kind of? The backup is simply a, a satellite dish. In other words, if the system goes down, it reroutes itself through satellite rather than through uh, cable internet. So what, where would it be sending the signal to? I don't understand the question. So I guess I'm thinking of a, a radio tower or something like that. So it's not it's, it's not like a radio. Tower. No, it's not. It's it's basically if you buy just a phone, you're going to see a phone on the desk. If you see a uh, if you get the data, it's going to be a computer, a phone, and somewhere outside you're building the satellite dish. So in the event that there's a this is hit through a storm or whatever, the backup will still work at that same location. Yes, the backup system is in case somewhere in the network things break down, not necessarily okay. at that site. Okay. I know in, in some instances where we've had radio communications, we've had them at the same, the backup has been at the same size, yes. 
as the, the initial one. Yeah. And it, when it gets hit, everything's down. Got it. Yeah. And and this this doesn't address a whole other system as a backup. It doesn't have that. They they don't go into whether or not your sheriff's office dispatch goes down for some reason. Okay. What what they're talking about the backup in this case is referring to the system going down for some Redundancy. whatever reason. Redundancy is more okay. for it. They use the term okay. backup, but yes, redundancy is more than anything else. Okay. But uh, well, I'm working with them on that. Uh, Tima would like an answer by uh, the first week of December on that. Let me ask you a question. The, the, the system that's in place right now has been in place for you don't know how long? Generations? Probably. Is it working? The reason why this is getting a, a, not a lot of traction is because the old system over the years has become very unreliable. It's not a well-liked system. And, and if I had to guess, uh, that's, that's why, like I said, no one's wanting to go with the new system because they've gotten to where it's not reliable. Part of the reason is, is they don't have technicians who work on that stuff anymore. They're having a hard time just finding people to fix it. So it is time for an upgrade at a, at a national level. Can the, the benefit of something like this is? Is, well, first off, you get all the, all the uh, reports. No matter what happens, you're going to get the reports directly from FEMA and TEMA to this system. You also have the ability over the old system. The old system was basically a big party line, okay? You picked up the phone, everybody could pick up and get the report. This, this has the ability to go point to point as well. Uh, if there's something going on on the west side of the state as far as weather coming this way, those guys can go in the system put reports in and we see it live. We don't have to wait for it. And we also see things as soon as FEMA puts them out as well. When I say we, I mean the county. So that's and, the advantage. And first responders can actually get this data and, and prepare yes. for something in the event that something goes wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, going to be a, it's going to be a huge upgrade over what they had before. The reason why you don't hear anybody talk about NAWAS as much is because it's such an old system right. and it's gotten so unreliable that it's not been depended on. For, for the first responder, please, fire EMS and all that stuff, it's, it's a very beneficial tool to have all this information to be able to plan in the event of, of weather. Uh, Mr. TK. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. The first year we have meeting this TEMA is going to purchase this and provide it uh, and install it at no cost. Yes, sir. After the first year, it would be the county's responsibility. Is yes, that sir. what we're saying? Yes, sir. So and that cost can run from about six hundred dollars a year to twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred here. So uh, we have to make if we we have to tell them you're saying by December sixth or whatever that we're in and we're we want to partner with you and uh, we'll be committed to spending the twenty four hundred or whatever tier we choose to choose to pick uh, after the first year is. Yes, is that correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. I mean, from my background, commissioners, I mean, it's a, it's a benefit to the first responders. Um, it's a valuable tool for the, in their toolbox to be able to, to plan, and that's kind of my my thought process on it for mm -hmm. um, taking for what it's worth. So what's your recommendation? I recommend we at least get to tier three, if not the tier four. I, I think that's a, like I said, buying something that's meant for emergency communications when things nationwide originally go bad without a, without some type of redundancy, you just, you're kind of wasting your time. And we need to make a decision tonight on which one or just that we're going to do one of the two? I just need to know, uh, uh, well, yeah, I need to know which package I'll prefer me to go with. So which one's better, which one? <laughs> I would say go with, uh, with, with, the, with the county of this size and growing, I would say you probably need to go with package four. I know that's the most expensive one, but that's the one that's going to give you the most capabilities going forward because what you're going to run into is since this is new technology is, is if we continue to grow and we decide, hey, we wanted the data piece and the redundancy as well, you're just going to end up paying for that later. Right now you can get team of paper the first year, get it installed and everything the way you want it. Why do you need the data and not just voice? Okay. Situation reports. Uh, the, the voice is every time you need to know something, you've got to initiate a call and find out, or the dispatcher will. Mm -hmm. uh, in this, with the situation reports and things being fed to you, you glean out what you need as you need it. It's, it's being produced and you're getting it live. 
And at the time, a dispatch is going to be covered up, and, there's, and, and them picking up the phone and calling to get that data when it's already coming to you automatically mm -hmm. is a very benefit. Yes. And then, like I said, also along with that first year, they're going to provide the training, the initial training for them. Mayor Burgess, have a recommendation? Well, just listening, I've heard what you've heard, and I haven't participated in this discussion before. I don't know but for twenty three hundred and fifty nine dollars, what the, I mean, a year, excuse me. I believe we can afford that, to, uh, and we need that support. So I recommend we go with go tier four. Page. We'll look at these. That's what I need to know. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't. I don't have. I know all the details on this particular Is system. Before I left active duty, there was discussion about this, this a system similar to this that had additional. Hardened mm -hmm. capabilities, in other words, could be uh, could yeah, defend against online. different types of mm -hmm. cyber attacks, that type of uh, threat uh, that appears to that be emerging. Right there. Okay. And, and the information we've gotten so far, without a lot of details on it, is that it has some hardening capabilities. What is the will of the committee? Does that go to budget? Well, yes, it should go ahead and go to budget. Even though we don't fund any money this year, we just need to go ahead and sort of get. We don't want to make an agreement to enter this with this. We're committed to following through with spending the real money the second year. So I think they need to be informed and let them make the decision with us. Recommend uh, level four funding and send it to budget. We have a motion. Is there a second? Hate spending 14 over tw <laughs> over twice as much, but uh, I think it, from what y'all have explained, if you're going to get it, you might as well get the the best one that can do it. So I'll second it. Uh, we got a motion and a second. Are there any discussion? Well, one other thing: if after a couple of years we don't like it, and they're deciding to jack it up to twenty-four thousand dollars a year instead of twenty-four hundred bu bucks a year. Is there an option? I don't know, but I, I would say yes. I mean, all agreements typically can be. Uh, Canceled with proper notice. I came in a little late on this discussion, but I'm pretty much aware of what you got going on. But uh, what the, the tier four elite package? How is that going to notify us better? I, I notice you've got satellite and internet there. Well, the how exactly is it used? Is it? Yeah, the satellite provides a redundancy in case there's a, there's a problem. The uh, the like, like I was uh, rough where you came in. When you have the data, you are able to receive the status reports and such as that without having to pick up the phone and go find information. Uh, so it, the, the, the data is probably going to be your most used product of this. You got to come into to the dispatch center. Uh, well, what you got to do is find it. Put it in the real world for me. Uh, let's just relate it to what happened up in Indiana, Illinois this week. How would that system in place, a tier one versus a tier four, made a difference to? Well, it, with on tier ground. one, with tier one, you, you would get phone calls unless you had a need or wanted to pick up the phone and call and ask for further information. Whereas with the tier four, I'm sure there were probably status reports produced for this to tell what was going on, which uh, and also the National Weather Service feeds into this as well. So you're getting you're getting feedback without having to go out and find it. It'll be right there in the system being fed to you, and that's the reason I think that part of it's going to be your most used part because we're all mm -hmm. used to. That's kind of what you're used to now. That's what you're doing right now with those pads. Aren't is, we? Aren't we? At some level, have that information already? Uh, depends on if it's if it's a national uh, event or a state event that's not necessarily right here. There are other ways we do get some of that information, but this is the the national uh, warning system. This so is something that comes down from FEMA. So who is who is giving the sheriff's department their alerts that they put out? to the fire departments. I, th I think they're listening to a weather radio in, in the dispatch over is what, I'm, was what I think it is. I mean, are you sharing this information or is this just your agency or is it going to be shared to the this sheriff's will, departments? Well, what, or it'll it needs to be somewhere be? where it's monitored 7 by 24, so to me that, that implies that it probably needs to be at the dispatch. And we have been talking to the sheriff about it, about whether it's something they want to go ahead and put yeah. there. Right, right now, the one that right when they got down, Robert, it's over at Murfreesboro Police Department, and it's back, I think, 1950 is when it 
was implemented, so it's an older system. Well, I mean, if we're going to spend this much money, I want something that's not going to benefit just one agency. No, it's, it's not meant it. to be that way. It's, it's, it's supposed to be one node in each county and, and, and that be shared throughout the county. And, too, I was wondering about the redundancy there. And like I said, I, I'm used to getting the reports through the fire department, the fire net. Mm. And, you know, usually if there's a storm coming, you know, I've got an alert kind of mm -hmm. like watching Channel 5. You'll see, you know, these radar alerts that are going out. And this also is used at national level for other events other than, than weather. I mean, the original, like I said, original uh, intent for NAWAS was in event of, you know, national attack or, or nuclear attack or something of that nature. This is also used for, you know, terrorist type events, such things as that. Earthquakes. Yeah. Earthquakes, which we are biggest coming from the West, so we know what to do. So uh, it's, for, for what it costs, it's going to provide a, a great deal of information to us. Okay, we've got a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, call room. Commissioner T. No. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. Anything else? That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the, uh, let's see, let's go to OSHA. Since Correctional Work Center, we'll go down here in a minute for them. Just to make sure we're fine. Okay. How are you doing now? Doing well, thank you. And you? Been better. Oh. <laughs> uh, you have your report in front of you for the OSHA report for the month of October. You know, the month of October, we had 15 injuries requiring medical attention. We have a breakout there for you to tell you kind of the nature of each of those injuries. That brings the total for the year up to 156. Of that 156, there are 105 that OSHA recordable. 65 of that were or had restricted days to the injury. 18 had lost days and 22 were all others. If you look at the next page of your report, you'll notice that uh, the graph will show the two previous years to this year. And while I realize you'll see peaks and valleys and things like that, just to kind of touch on it, in 2011, October at this time, at the end of October, there were 205 injuries for the year in 2011. In 2012, there were 175, and of course we're at 155 this year. So we are on a downhill trend right now as far as work-related injuries. Of course, remember too, not just on that, but we've got additional people in the county because of the new school opening up this past year and things like that. And so the county does have more employees. So we'll have more employees with less injuries at this time. Um, next page, you'll see that the uh, total incurred dollars for that 15 was 15,190. Uh, eight of the claims were with the Board of Education and the uh, total incurred dollars there were 3,000 670. The remainder were with, with the county general, which were 10. The uh, incurred dollars were 11520 And then on the next page, you'll see where it breaks down the county and it, it lists those different departments. And you'll see that departments that incurred injuries were the sheriff department, the ambulance service, animal services, and there was one here in the courthouse also identified. The last page of your report just shows you the total dollars and kind of give you an idea of where we are for the total dollars. Again, uh, a reminder always that the year that we're presently in, those claims are still open, so as the claim matures, those dollars could go up. But in 2011, we completed and closed out the year at 467000 In 2012, it went up a little bit to 538 and this year, right now, we're at 266000 as total incurred dollars. 
And that's all I have at this time for any, you. Any questions on those reports? Motion to approve the report. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second. On the favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, motion is carried. That's it? I have nothing up for you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. You too. Juvenile detention. How are you doing tonight? Great. Okay. You have in front of you uh, a report for October. And there's nothing unusual for the month of October. The only thing I would point out is because we had our monthly meeting early, um, we're showing that several counties still owe. Right. Generally, we get those next week. I don't expect that that's going to be a problem by the time we have our next meeting. And then I've included the new um, charts that you're going to be, or forms that you're used to seeing probably by now as far as the breakdown of <coughs> in-county and out-of-county detainees. Um, the only other thing I have is that we had a successful open house on the 8th, and this month we're celebrating our 20th year anniversary. So. 20 years. Hmm. Remember just like it's yesterday. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions on her report? And if there's no questions, we'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Got a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried. That's it? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the uh, we'll skip drug court because she's not going to be here tonight. We'll go and we'll come back at the end. Sheriff Department. Are they here? Or are they? How you doing? I'm good. You don't know where man get a bar pit, do you? <laughs> man get a what? A bar pit. A bar bar pit. Pit. I seen him on in the newspaper. Oh. Just to keep you Well, if everybody saw the D and J, y'all are here to examine my monthly budget report. Big news. Headlines. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering what's the what was the hubba? What the yeah. Yeah, it was too. Nothing new. All right. Y'all ready to go? Yep. Okay, for tonight, we're basically a lot of this is um, um, just all the stuff that has money that's donated to it, and that's what a lot of these amendments are, so I'm just running through them. So the first one is uh, donations <coughs> for the canine. Uh, $670, and we want to put that into the animal supplies line item on the sheriff's office side, uh, $670. Uh, there were donations for scan and a memorial garden that totaled $1,004, and we're going to break those into the two separate uh, two separate budgets that those those dollars come out of. So it would be $499, $399, broken down as $954 for $499 and $50 for the other on the other contract side. Uh, the third one there is a sale of materials that's done by the explorers and the Memorial Garden, Vegetable Garden, where they sell materials. And so we're going to, that totaled up to $1,300. And we're going to put those into respective budgets again on $399 and $499, which is where those, uh, where those uh, uh, funds pull out of. Then uh, for the, uh, we had a sale of recycled materials, and we're putting all that money back in our vegetable garden. So uh, there's $4,767 of recycled materials that came in. Uh, we're going to put that in our 499, which is what the uh, uh, vegetable garden pulls out of. Then on the next one, um, you know, we, put on, we put on a lot of classes um, at, the, at the office there, and our guys do a real good job, and that way we save the county money anyway by not having to travel and, and things of that nature to go to other, other schools. So we put on schools. So this is where we had uh, money come in for some schools we, we put on, um, and it generated revenue for the county in the amount of $20,058. So we're going to put those funds back into the in-service line item for the sheriff's office and then uh, repair and maintenance of the building, which I think is down at the range is where they're going to put that money. Yes. Yeah. And so um, uh, 30, thirty thousand one hundred eight dollars there. Um, I got a request from our Just IP. give me an example of what some of that training might be. It could be a uh, SWAT school, uh, officer survival school, uh, jail, TCI training. Uh, you know, cold case conference that we put on. So there's multiple schools that we put on for different agencies as well as uh, sometimes we go to those at other agencies and we pay to go to those. So when we put them on, they pay to come to us. 
has that happened last year, year before, year before? Is yeah. That oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've done the cold case conference every other year as well. We did it first two years I was in office. We laid off one year, and we're doing another one this year. So we're very honored. Like Dr. Bass, we have a lot of big names uh, that come in for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The uh, IT division for us uh, has requested to move 15000 from data processing equipment and to repair and maintenance of equipment. Instead, uh, she decided instead of buying new, she's going to buy parts. And then we have received a uh, SCAMP grant money. Uh, we're going to $4,128. I'm going to put that into translating our inmate manuals into Spanish. That's and that's cool. all I have for that fund there, or for general fund items. All right. Is there a recommendation, motion? Do we need to do these separate or do the other one too? Benetter, I guess Benetter so separate be accounts. Fund. Yeah, these, these are general fund and I'll do yeah. the next one. Yeah, next. Those are narcotics fund, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So on the first um, seven, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve that. It's on revenue coming in, basically. So, Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Our right, discussion. But I just have to ask out loud. Mm -hmm. You mentioned translating. And that's something that's mandated for you to do? Yeah. If you, uh, you have to communicate. And if there is a language barrier there, then we have to do everything as government. We have a due diligence uh -huh. to communicate with them. And so, therefore, even if it costs us money, if we have uh, inmates in the facility that speak German, then we need to translate it into German for them. If we don't, we are liable for lawsuits. Two questions along with that. Mm -hmm. The SCAP grant, is that state or federal? That's a federal grant that we get for actually housing uh, illegal aliens. Okay. And what's a, of the Spanish-speaking people that are in the jails, what's their level of reading approximately? Right? Low? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't know English. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but even in Spanish, I bet it's low. Yeah, it's, it's what I'm getting at. Hey, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta read it to them, it. we have a due diligence to provide it for them, and therefore, if if we don't provide it for them, yeah. then we, the county, are susceptible well, you have to, to provide people to read it to them. If they ask for it, then we'll find, we, we've got a great translator over here at the courthouse, and we've worked a deal with them to where if we really need them for some reason, they'll come out to the jail and help us. Okay. Uh, so the county already has things in place, but this is one thing that we have not had in place, and we do have, you know, about a 2% jail population that is, you know, Spanish speaking, so. All right, we got a motion, and we got a second, and then we've got discussion. Is there any more discussion? Hearing or seeing none, call the roll. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. And we got the drug fund now, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, so we had, uh, let's see, this is a reco insurance recovery check that came in for $3,427, and we want to put that back in, it was a, it was a marked vehicle. Uh, we want to put that into our uh, new vehicle line item, uh, 718, in the uh, NARC of the drug fund. Motion right. to approve. We got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second discussion. Call the room. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. Okay. I'll entertain any questions on our budget report. Here comes the headlines. The budget <laughs> report. So are we going to run out of money on <coughs> anything in particular like gasoline or utilities or? Well, if gas will stay below okay. three bucks, we might be okay this year. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> At this Fingers time, crossed. we are looking pretty good looking with our good. budget. Yeah, we're pretty happy with that. How's, so, the, uh, how's the medical thing? Is everything still in line? Everything's, everything's still going pretty good. Now, you're going to see uh, the state did come and get quite a few of their inmates the other day. Uh, they took out about 170 inmates uh, around. The new so, prison? Yeah, the new prison they opened up up in East Tennessee. So, uh, naturally... Uh, we should be, if this stays, the numbers stay the way we are, we'll be really good when it comes to food. Because uh, naturally, you know, 170 people, three, th three meals a day, it's a lot of meals. So, Were uh, we able to get rid of our, some of our sicker ones? Uh, yes, we uh, asked the state to take those first. Uh, 
So, uh, you know, numbers are down, and we, we actually with the numbers down, we're actually able to work on the annex. The annex building has not uh, had any paint or uh, any substantial work done on it in probably 17 years. So right now we have shut down some pods over there, and we are literally going through, and uh, some of the concrete has fallen out. We're able to. We're going to take time to patch that, paint, uh, sand, do all that good stuff, fix some of the water leaks. So we're taking advantage of this time. That's inmate labor, right? All inmate labor, except for the officers that are right. watching them. So, I mean, really and truly over this past year, <clears throat> we've been very lucky. We started on level five. We've worked very, uh, down. We just completed level two not too long ago, and then the state's done this. So we've uh, sh shut down parts of the annex. All with inmate labor, we've paid for materials uh, to do it all, but you know, fresh paint everywhere. So, and our infection rate has dropped tremendously. So, on the report, y'all have heard is discussion and entertain a motion on the report. I'll make a motion to approve just because I, I need something else to say. I have something. Second. I have oh. another question. Okay, we got a motion and we have a second our discussion on the report. Okay, um, well, not really on the report, but anyways, I received a phone call the other day about somebody um, over, and you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, lives over in the Rockvale school zone in a neighborhood uh, right next to oh yes i know exactly where right you're where you come out and um in the mornings apparently it's extremely hard to turn left which i can imagine which is probably terrible coming out of that and you oh actually i'm thinking of something totally different okay go ahead <laughs> you're actually uh, don't tell is there something else Keep i need going. to know <laughs> <laughs> do we need to talk later we can um okay so anyways the it's that neighborhood right there at the dollar store Mm -hmm. Okay, so getting oh. out. Yes. Okay, getting out in the mornings during school zone traffic and in the afternoons um, after school is almost impossible, with the exception of you know, jump on the gas and hope you don't get hit. Yes. Okay. I talked to the same person you did. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just giving information to everybody else too, so I want to make sure that everybody understands what I'm talking about. Um, and so apparently you told them that this was not your problem, it was a budgetary problem. Well, they asked for a crossing guard to come stand out there during the time that uh, school was backing up their traffic. They wanted me to provide a crossing guard for their subdivision okay. to direct traffic because they wanted to get in and out of their subdivision. And I told them that I did not have the resources nor the manpower to provide a crossing guard or a full-time deputy every day at seven o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock and from two to four in the afternoon to direct traffic in and out of their subdivision. Okay, well, this is my issue. Um, we as a county, we, it's true, we created this problem. I mean, we put two schools right in front of each other and on a major highway, which has major traffic coming into the, into the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we literally, we created the, the traffic issue there. Okay. Um, and we need to try to alleviate it at least a little bit during that time. Uh, now, I obviously am not the expert in that area, and um, I, I feel like you are, and I would appreciate if you would make a recommendation as to how to possibly at least, um, you know, we can't make a full-time, I mean, we can't make a long-term fix of this, but, um, you know, something before, and this is a state highway, we're looking at widening it at some point in time, but we never know what's going to happen to it. Um, I mean, somebody, and I know we can't fix every problem in the county, but not every school zone has an issue. Correct. And, uh, I mean, I, as far as I know, there's no problem at Eagleville. I know there's no problem in Christiana. I go through that one every morning. Um, I know there's no issues in Riverdale. I go through that one every morning, but that's a major. Yeah, there is issues in Riverdale. Well, but not to this effect. <laughs> actually, not to this actually, issue. Actually, we've got these not type of issues. Um, if you recall, uh, I had several people call me. Uh, there's another entrance going outside of Siegel that I had numerous people call me and call the commissioner that they did want another crossing guard out at Siegel. 
So I talked to that commissioner. That commissioner asked me last year to put it in my budget where when I was recommended to kind of pull them out of my budget. So it was kind of a toss up. Uh, and so then I went back to him after we went to this committee. He was talking about putting him back in. It ultimately got pulled out. I'm, you know, that is one recommendation. The other is a traffic light. Now, naturally, with that, just like you had to fight uh, right after we all took office for the traffic light down there at Veterans, and, and that was a great thing that you did in, in trying to help working with the mayor's office to get that there because we needed it. The only other thing there. Right yeah, here. Well, it was both of you. Then. <laughs> I, I know both of y'all, but, but the traffic light there. Uh, that would be the other recommendation. I've told you many times, your district sits in zone seven, mm -hmm. which gets the least amount of law enforcement in the county mm -hmm. when it comes to our zones. That's the one that, it, manpower wise, that gets the least. Uh, so that, there's your other, in lies your other problem out there. Okay. It's not just said, one thing I'm gonna throw in, and it's kind of a pet peeve of mine, but I had to have a Dollar General on 96, and I insisted on putting turn lanes there and if planning would insist on putting turn lanes in these businesses uh, that would help us yes. too and that's not coming out of the pocket of the, of the county and, or, or the taxpayers here it's coming from the business there was a turn lane on that on that very dollar general right there but the, the commissioner before her fought tooth and nail it, well, uh, but this is also talk. She's talking to subdivision coming out right next to. Yeah, it. this is so a subdivision, but right Girl beside there. Also puts but, turning lanes in well, front of some of the subdivisions. You know, go out Bradyville Highway, for instance. Reach. Left turns all the time when you go through di where shopping areas are in this in si it, it, the it's cities and everywhere. You got that the, same problem. And and sometimes you have to, yeah. sometimes you have to make a right turn, go down <laughs> to an intersection, and cross and come back the other way. That, that, I mean, this is what I would like to see happen. Look at it, try and come up with as many different possible solutions, and make a recommendation. If you don't mind. I'd be glad okay. to. Okay. I'll make a recommendation. But when you, when you do that, you need to reduce all of the other attendant locations that might have similar situations. Okay. That's the, unfortunately the thing is, we do this for this particular situation, and I promise you, you're Every one of y'all who come back from our school, <laughs> another situation. I'm gonna give you my but list before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> but here's here's the problem. There probably are some other in the county that have a similar situation, but not all of them. And we have to remember that not every area is exactly the same as other. And you can't just say, okay, every school zone is gonna get two crossing guards or every school zone is gonna get three because not every school zone is exactly the same. And so being fair to one school zone might look something different than being fair to another one. I mean, it's the same thing with kids. You don't do exactly the same thing with one child that you do with the other child but yet you're still being equitable and fair. I can promise you, so. I can come up with a solution. That we we okay. as government can come up with a solution. It's all gonna cost us. And that's that's the thing. I've okay. talked to many elected officials, you know, about these type of things. There's not a problem in government we can't fix without some money. Okay, but we've never seen, you've never brought that to this committee to look at in that, in, because whenever we get it, what you do is you create a budget and you put everything you want in your budget and you slam it down in front of us and you say pick out what you want to take out. No, I and have to give you the essentials. Okay. And then I give you what I would like. But and then you know there are some things I say these are the what we need and what we what citizens would like for us to do. You know this just popped up in the past two weeks, three weeks at the most because I remember the phone call just recently. So that hadn't even had time to come into a budgetary process. Okay. I'm just tired of sitting up here and you throwing stuff out at us and saying, figure out what you want to take. Because everything, it seems like everything that you do, you put it in front of us and you, you do it just to get some of the liability off of yourself and put it on us. No, every, everything I but, do is to take the liability off the county okay. itself. Okay, well that, that's a so good thing. So I don't appreciate that at all. Okay, that's a good thing. But um, 
what I would like for you to do is to try and figure out some issues, uh, fix some of these issues, and present a solution to us. Well, I think I have in so. your district alone. I've talked to you many a times about providing more law enforcement uh, out in your district alone because okay. there are many nights that your district alone goes without law enforcement coverage. Okay, so try putting that in the budget. I have. And say, okay, well, I have never sat here and seen it. Cause Every time whenever you put extra officers in the budget, that's what it's for. It's actually for your district. I don't recall us sitting here at a budget time. Somebody We've correct never me talked if, about if your I'm district wrong. specifically, but I put them in the budget, and that's ultimately what it's okay. for. I'm going to say one more thing, and then I'm going to be done with it. And we can talk about it later if you, if you feel the need. Um, I don't recall a time in the last three years that we have sat here and said we need extra officers to and, and I might be wrong I, I could very well be wrong three years is a long time um, and we have we've cut out extra an extra officer or so yes I, we have okay well, our, our, I mean, I that there has been yeah, that was what the five-year okay. plan y'all asked me to present to you it has it in the five-year plan. Okay, but there's times throughout the county that, um, you know, if, if somebody's off or something, then why don't we, why do we not have somebody filling in that, that position? It's a manpower issue, the overtime issue. Uh, you know, you only have so many officers. You know, the officers now work 12-hour shifts. So, uh, you know, if, it all comes down to paying for it. Uh, I don't mind giving it to you uh, and showing you this is it. You know, that's why when he asked about doing the staffing analysis, I was all for it because I think, you know, I've talked to you many times outside these doors about staffing issues here and there. I wouldn't call a couple uh, many, but okay. I call a couple, a few, you know, several times we've talked about it. I've talked to you at the sheriff's office when you've come down to bring lunch. Okay. You know about any time you want to know there's I'd love to give you a full statistical review every month of my budget but if I do of what all we're doing at the sheriff's office we'll be here at this meeting alone probably two hours if I took break down the jail numbers every month the patrol numbers detective numbers CID and narcotics if you want a full layout like the ambulance service does I started doing that when I first took office and I got asked, why was I doing that? I'll be glad to break it down. And I'll show you what's going on in your district, your district, your district, your district. You know, even though that some commissioners live in the city and they're all city zones, we still do a lot of stuff in every one of the commissioner's districts. We serve civil process. We arrest people every day. Now, when it comes down to our patrol officers, the way it works, when they work their 410s or 412s, they're tired. They don't want overtime. Mm -hmm. It's gotten to that point. It's because of our manpower issues. And anytime you want to come down or talk to the guys without me there, if you think that I'm going to persuade it, come talk to the guys. My door is always open to each and every one of you. And I think you all know it. You've got my number. Call me anytime. And you can talk to any of my supervisors. I'm not a type of person that says don't talk to them without me there. You want to go talk to them and get your own answers, please feel free to do so. Okay. Try and find a solution. Don't you worry. Do I'll have you a solution next month. Okay. Now try to find me the money to do it. That's all I ask. Well, Thank that, you. If you can sit down with um, Lisa Nolan and, and find somewhere in it, then I'm in. And that's where we need I'll to find the solution, then. and it's up to the commission to fund it. So then you've got another 20 people to help you. Anything else? Yeah, I got one. I was looking for extradition. I yes. something. Just got anything to do with a report? Yes. Good. I can't <laughs> find it on there. Extradition? What 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 it's line item did uh, under? Always get that. Prisoner transport. Uh, five four two one. It's under the jail budget. Two one. Three fifty four. That's what you're looking for. Three fifty four. And we're down to uh, sixteen thousand three hundred twenty-two dollars, three hundred twenty dollars. Okay, yes. Because I know some of the these years we've had quite. Yeah. Okay. Good. And uh, 
way more than what was budgeted, for example, that's come out. Okay. I was just wanted to see what it was. And I saw okay. jury and witnesses, and I could figure that one out, so I could. <laughs> what side you guys on? Uh, the, the two or three. Uh, and the it's, three uh, on it's under the jail budget, the 54210. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, sir. Uh, Which one is it? 54210354. It's going to be the third line down. Okay. All right, is there any other questions on this uh, report? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Y'all got anything else? Just the other no. for this month. Uh, Down and there's one for your record. I think you'll find in there some good reading. I always like reading these. I mean, because you see a lot of stuff people are doing out there. Naturally, the bad stuff surfaces to the top. You read it in the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. We had to hand deliver that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let's see here. Next is, well, let's see here. Let me get this thing. Work center, isn't it? Yeah, Correctional Work Center. Mm -hmm. If I can get this thing to go back, there it is. Correctional Work Center. Um, Mr. Slaney's not able to make it here tonight. And Mayor, I, I think you said everything was kind of in order. Yeah, I mean it's it's running smooth. You can see the the average number of inmates is up just a little, 181 for October, uh, but otherwise it's pretty stable. I think the first thing you see there is. This year, for the first four months, you can see the, how many inmates we've got in this work release program. Mm -hmm. You can see the, there's 12 in there in October on the average. And you can see in the comments that in July, one was hired full time. August 2013, another one was uh, completed the program, but he didn't take an, uh, a position that was offered to him. Another inmate completed the program was hired at, uh, in September. In October, uh, another one was hired. So this program is working. These people are working while they're with us, and then they're getting an opportunity at, at real full-time jobs, which is what this is all about. So that's that's a good outcome, and we. Right. But other than that, it, it's everything is going well. All right. Is, is there any questions? Or if there's no questions, we entertain a motion whenever you're all ready. Move to approve the report. Got a motion? Do we have a second? Second. And a second. Everybody ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next is the drug court. Mary's not able to be here tonight. And from what Mayor Burgess said, this is kind of... You can, you can see her report there. And uh, the month of November is almost identical to what happened in September and October. Everything is very, very stable. Mm -hmm. 42 people in the uh, drug court program and 23 people in the DUI court program. And uh, other than that, there's really not anything to report. It's mm -hmm. stable and moving smoothly. And then we are all ready. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. I mean report, not minutes. But all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And I think that's got down to any other business now. I'll open the floor for any other business. Is December meeting okay? The, time, the date and everything? Uh, we did change it, didn't we? I can't remember what the date was. 16. We changed it last month? I think we did, didn't we? Do we change okay. the 16? I believe it is. Uh, this is the 19th. We moved it up. I have it on Monday the 16th. Monday the 16th. Is that date still okay with everybody? Up here, nobody objecting. That's the Monday immediately after the commission. Right. Is there anybody else who's got any other business? Hearing or seeing none, thank you. I wish to adjourn. Did we move property management? <laughs>